I believe the birthday gift for Donald Trump was in something called Rule 29. Rule 29. If you don't know <clears throat> about Rule 29, you need to. So let me teach you about it. Number one, today in federal court, every other case that is pending against Donald Trump, Alvin Bragg, Letitia James, Fanny in Georgia, all of these secret fantasies were placed on adjournment today, okay? Now, this is big. Here's why this is big. Remember, the Alvin Bragg case was already almost out of time for the statute of limitation. Because of some little weakness in the law, they were able to push it through and extend that statute of limitation. So the statue will probably run out on the Bragg case. Um, all, everything is on adjournment now. Letitia James said today she cannot move forward. All their hands are tied. Now, stay with me. So here's going to happen. In federal court, which takes precedence over state court, everything else is, is in adjournment. And the time has, has, has gone and started ticking now on the statute of limitations. Nothing can happen now until a Trump-appointed judge makes her rulings. I want you to hear what I just said. A Trump-appointed judge. Do you guys realize that this could have and should have been tried in Washington, D.C. We need to we need to pause and say, you know what? This is a bad hand we've been dealt. But let's look at the goodness of the Lord. It is being handled not only in Florida, but with a Trump appointed judge. Her name, Eileen Cannon. Now the president appointed the very judge that is overseeing this case. So let's start right there. By the end of Donald Trump's presidency, the statute of limitations will have run out on these lesser state charges, all right? So honestly, this what happened today puts a cap on those little wannabe district attorneys in those Democrat states, okay? <clears throat> <clears throat> Did you know that Rule 29, Rule 29 of the Federal Judicial Rules, okay? There's a rule there called Rule 29, which gives this judge the authority to ultimately dismiss this case. Now, she cannot do it until the trial starts. Now, that's going to be a year from now, okay? But in that year, nothing else is coming against Trump. They cannot tie him up in court anywhere else. His hands were set free today. This lady, Eileen Cannon, is in full control of, number one, the scheduling of the docket, okay? That could have huge implications for the president because now, once she sets a trial date, according to law, Donald Trump has a right to a speedy trial. That's typically, not, not, not typically, legally 70 days. That never happens, never. And here's why. The minute you file a motion, a motion to dismiss, a motion... Every time someone files a motion, that stops the clock on the 70-day right to a speedy trial. So if my attorney, Donald Trump's attorney, files a motion to dismiss, that 70-day clock stops until that motion 
is ruled on. All right? <clears throat> she is in full control of the scheduling. And the closer he gets to the presidency, the closer he gets to election time, is the closer he gets to a full pardon from himself on all of his so-called crimes. So all we need to do is what? Run the clock out. And who will decide how to run that clock out? You guessed it. A Trump-appointed judge. So Donald Trump's attorneys file a motion, clock stops. The other side's uh, team files a motion, clock stops. We file another motion, clock stops. They file another motion, clock stops. The closer he gets to the presidency, the closer he gets to a pardon full and free. So the schedule is really everything. You ever heard the old saying, timing is everything? All right. Who's in control of the timing? So the Department of Justice cannot speed this up. No one can do that except for a Trump appointed judge. Now, we're going to file a motion to dismiss immediately. Did you know that this judge can approve that motion? She sure can. We're going to file it and um, a myriad of other motions. That will stop the clock and restart it every time. Number two. So number one, she's in charge of the schedule. Complete, in, she's completely in charge of the schedule. Number two, she's fully in charge of jury selection. And who is on the jury makes all the difference in the world. Okay? Under the federal rules of criminal procedure, I've not got to rule 29 yet. Y'all hang tight. Under the federal rules of criminal procedure, she can, this is, a, this is so powerful. She can, and I quote, substitute her own judgment like any federal judge can in place of the judgment of the jury. Let me explain that to you. All right. According to rule, now this is rule 29, this part right here, rule 29 under the federal rules of criminal procedure, she can, now she has to have a trial to, to use rule 29. She has a trial. She listens to all the evidence. At the end of the trial, a federal judge, now no other judge but a federal judge can do this. She can say, I've heard the evidence and there is no there there. She impanels the jury. Now she has to impanel the jury according to Rule 29. She impanels the jury and then before the jury reaches a verdict, she can take her own judgment and say, "There's I've listened to the evidence. There's no there there. And now she rules to vacate the indictment. She, now, listen, folks, this is powerful, but here's why it's powerful. If she implements Rule 29, it is absolutely not appealable or reviewable. I want you to hear me. So let me make this plain for you. The woman that is now in control of this case, appointed by Donald Trump, has all authority to make a decision and no one can appeal it. No one can review it. No other judges can review it. That is called rule 29. It's in the federal rules of criminal procedures. It allows federal judges, if there is a motion by the defense, and they will be, to dismiss. She says, I, I heard the evidence. There's no need for the jury to deliberate. I've heard the whole case. We're not going to proceed. She can say this does not qualify for an espionage act. This should have been tried under the Presidential Records Act, which is civil, by the way. We're not going to do this in my court. Immediately, Rule 29 is invoked, and no one, nowhere can review it 
or appeal it. And if you cannot appeal it to the 11th circuit, because then you have double jeopardy. So it's totally unappealed, but unappealable and unreviewable. She can toss it out because of rule 29. Now, there's other things that she has power over. Number three, evidentiary issues or evidentiary motions. So they bring all these pictures that and say, look, he had all these documents. And she says, yeah, but I don't like how you got that picture. Did you do it this? She can rule not to even allow that evidence to be presented to the jury. All right. That's rule 29. That's the way it works. And luckily that power, that power does not rest in the hands of a liberal judge. Today it rests in the hands of a conservative Trump appointed federal judge. Now do you see why your judge matters? Folks, here's what's going to happen. However this plays out, However it turns out, we're going to run out the clock until the election. Donald Trump will be elected. He will have all power by the Constitution of the United States to pardon himself of these crimes. Once he's in office for four years, now what's happened to those state charges? The statute of limitations have all run out. I've got more hope for Donald Trump today than I've ever had before. And not only that, a poll just came out. His numbers are skyrocketing. Let me see if I can pull that poll up for you. Uh, it's on my face, my Facebook timeline. So rule 29, you need to share this with all patriots. They need to know about rule 29. Facebook said they just blocked my live stream for whatever reason. But uh, anyway, all right, folks, that's it. That's really all I had tonight. I did. Oh, let me read the poll. The poll is, um, here we go. Are you ready? This is an average of all the polls today. Donald Trump is up 33 points ahead of DeSantis. It keeps rising every day. He's at 55.6%. So, hey, folks, this thing's going to work out. I know it's late. I shouldn't have kept you up this late. But I wanted to share what I had found out about Rule 29 and also to let you know, rest easy tonight. President Trump will rest easy. He knows the judge that's in charge of his trial. Okay? All right, folks. Um, Julie Watkins, let me highlight your question because it's a good question. It's a good question. Let me, if I can scroll back up. There we go. She says, you're saying that he'll be elected, but he was elected last time and lost. How can we ensure the same won't happen again? Great questions. I was one of the very few podcasters that never talked about voting machines. None of you ever heard me do a show on Dominion or anything like that. I told you from the beginning and I stand by it today. Donald Trump lost the election, so-called, because of mail-in ballots. Mark it down. That's why he lost, or so-called lost. Since the election, all of the swing states have passed. Remember, those swing states all have Republican legislatures. They have all passed laws now requiring voter, voter identification, and they have, they have closed the loophole for the mail-in ballot. That's great news, folks. Now, on top of that, will there be cheating in other areas? Of course. However, here's where Pastor Vaughn has to come in, okay? The very same God that gave Donald Trump a win when he was 11 points behind Hillary Clinton will be the same God that does it again. It's amazing to me how all of us patriots believe the Bible 
We believe that David killed Goliath with one little stone. But when it comes to believing in that same God that can dispatch his angels to election stations, we just don't have enough faith for that. Folks, listen to me. It was God, Yahweh, that let Donald Trump leave the White House or he would have been impeached. I've told you that a thousand times. Learn to trust in the God that loves America more than you do. Okay? It's going to all work out. I'll see you guys Thursday night, okay? Y'all hang in there. Better days are just ahead. Have no fear. Good night, everybody.